last chapter is a short chapter but it's quite an important chapter um, it's all about scheduling and just a scheduling introduction uh, that we've got so that's chapter 10 that we're going to look at um, just paging to it as we go through now and I've only included one very simple example there's some couple of other examples here as well that uh, you should please go through so please just uh, do not only learn the example that we're going to look at so i've tried to summarize the lecture because i've seen uh, much of the recordings are quite long and um, it's actually quite large files that uh, that's uploaded onto youtube so i want to try and keep limit it as as much as possible so if you look at your construction sequence um, there is a, th a certain thought process that you go through so um, many of you that are in the industry already um, might have learned a process already that you go through um, some people do it differently than others um, some work according to the boq items in the trades other works um, from another template that you've worked with before and you do your um, sequencing usually but i think in short what we're going to explain here is very similar to uh, is basically the process that everyone uses or follows so then you have your uh, program considerations that's what i just uh, talked about so it will depend on your specific project if you're looking at a road construction project it will be different than your uh, typical building project um, because you will have certain sections of the program that will repeat itself um, depending on the um, the amount of cut and fill that you have to have on your roads and then you have your resource considerations um, how much resources do you have available to actually do the work and you always try and get some continuity within your work so you've got your uh, the example that i always use is the a brick layer for instance if you sequence your work you want to try and keep the same face brick layer on a certain section and you want to try and f finish a section within a day um, to keep the signature more or less the same so you, that you don't have a, a, a line of where the uh, brick layer started and stopped uh, on the one day uh, or where a new brick layer had to come in and finish a job uh, you will always see that line um, whenever you look at the facade of the building so uh, those are the things that you need to look at okay and then uh, figure 10.11 a very important um, slide for me is whenever you do your sequencing you have your sequence of operations and then your construction methods and choice of plant so and then you have your program direct um, durations and your program um, put out on a bar chart so this is more or less the process that you do do your scheduling if you use programs like ccs or microsoft projects or so um, these items can take place fairly simultaneously um, you do not have to do um, this first three items in preparation of uh, developing your bar chart you can actually um, sequence your items on your um, program you can um, look at the methods that you're going to use you can put in the durations and you can link your items to produce your bar chart so um, the program uh, just allows you to do some of the operations simultaneously okay so whenever you look at your sequencing of programs you always consider your drawings identify the main activities to think about prepare the phasing diagram um, for appropriate to help you in um, getting the right um, uh, sequence on in place and um, to get your thought process in 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 that uh, sense it's always if, um, if you approach it very practically it's a very nice uh, thing scheduling uh, because you're building the building basically in your mind as you go along if you have a model to work from it just makes life much easier and then you look at the significant elements or stages of the project so you divide your project into different stages or sections um, do not have too many activities so please do not overburden yourself especially at the beginning of a project um, because you will um, it just um, 
becomes too much information. Break it down into easily understandable chunks that you can use. Do not worry about the minor detail um, at this stage. Okay, and then uh, you look at your method statements. Where are your cranes going to be? Material, hoarding, hoisting, access, equipment, scaffolding that you need to acquire. Um, temporary works. Well, you have to um, build a temporary shelter maybe for a, um, a certain section that you have to um, have precision painting um, put on, for instance. Um, do you have to construct a, um, a large um, or your form work that you have to construct for temporary uh, for a short while while you pour your concrete that type of thing creating working space around your structure that type of things then you have your uh, program durations then you put in your subcontractors how long it will take for each item the plan the labor supervision you take that into consideration and then you list your activities you use your summary uh, summary activities uh, in the program, your interview duration, and you link your um, um, activities. So with the programs that you've got available, you can do this simultaneously, and um, you can s uh, move your items up and down to suit your requirements. Uh, so it makes life a bit much easier to do it on, uh, like in a bit more organic way than um, do going through it in a systematic way. So the programs allow you to think a little bit more freely about your sequencing and programming. Okay, so the example that we're going to look at is a very simple example of just applying that. Um, just make sure that you go through the rest of the examples as we go through. They add a couple of um, details um, like for instance in figure 10.4 you will see uh, that they've added um, reinforcing and it's a different way of uh, construction so now you've got um, brickwork instead of concrete so you've got nine items that you schedule instead of the normal seven so just make sure um, that you um, make sure that you uh, go through that as well so they've got a number of um, of examples that you can go through within the chapter some of the um, sequencing items that we're going to do uh, we will deal with a little bit later on um, in unit 5 um, but make sure that you start reading through chapter 10 already okay so um, we've got a very simple example of your of a basement that needs to be constructed so you've got your excavating in your sport your blinding slab your floor construction wall construction and um, you've got your um, backfill and earth um, your backfill that you've got here in in this side so you can see it's been drawn out and this is the diagram that the previous figure spoke about a uh, diagram just makes it much easier um, and this can also be utilized whenever, whenever you do a, a method statement as well. Okay, so what they've done is they've gone and sequenced the items. So here is um, the items, um, uh, the pro, um, just the process that they've used. So you've got your diagram. Um, so they've drawn it out. Um, key considerations, then you consider certain key um, consider considerations. So the sequence of the work requires consideration of the ground conditions as this directly influences the earth support methods to be adopted on site. This might include the use of sheet piling or the battered excavations as illustrated in the diagram. And then then you, uh, you sequence your items as we've um, seen that they've sequenced it. Um, and then you produce your linked bar chart from that. So first things first, you sequence and you list your items. Uh, here you can see they've added some additional uh, information. <coughs> For instance, I've got the formwork first and then placing of reinforcement and then pouring of the concrete. And then you've got your concrete wall and your backfill. And uh, once you've sequenced them, you can allocate time to that uh, and then you can see 
okay this is more or less how much time you need you need about 19 days for it um, and then you can um, make adjustments according to your available resources so maybe looking at your form work placing of your form work you can maybe put a, a one team on the one wall and another team on the other wall to shorten this period so here what they've done is they've started with um, the placing of the form work as the one wall is completed and then as the other walls are being completed the rest of the um, re reinforcement is placed then the concrete is poured you can even bring this forward if you want to as the one wall is complete um, you can uh, maybe pour that one wall if there's a construction joint that you might have to um, put in between the different sides of the walls so um, very simple explanation of how the sequencing works and that is more or less it for chapter 10 um, just make sure that you go through the entire chapter and just read through it and uh, to get the insight of why I didn't include all of the um, items from 10.3 of your book um, is because that relates to your actual construction sequencing so this first section relates to up to page um, 204 um, basically relates to your sequencing methods that you would use whenever you do a tender um, so that's why I included that so um, just be mindful of that that I've split chapter 10 into uh, one section and another section as you get into construction so um, just make sure that you do um, note that difference okay thanks everyone all of the best for you Bye.